All right, so we are almost ready to start the coloring phase of this project, but I wanted to review the different ways we can get clean line art, you know, the digital inking phase. So this was my pencil sketch. I cleaned it up in Photoshop. I flipped it. I added some compositing. However you can get to your refined sketch is a good way to go. Then I got to my clean vector by one method that I showed you, which is one I often use professionally for, for my kind of stylization of work, which is to take a scan of the inks. So I'll ink it by hand with an inking pen. I have that somewhere. Scan those inks. Nope, that's the vector. <laughs> Then take that ink scan, this was the scan of the inks, and then use Photoshop or use Preview to really darken that, make it clean. And then what I did at the, in the last video, just to remind you, is I took that scan of the inks that was just a black and white JPEG file and I open it in Adobe Illustrator. And this is a great function of Illustrator that's not in any freeware that I know of. Uh, the other program you can use and buy a lifelong license for that I like is called VectorMagic.com. So this is the only reason you want Illustrator, which is to live trace things. Then you can also, I'll, I'll demo it right here, just like I did in the afternoon class. I can take that JPEG and I can drop it into this site called VectorMagic.com. And it will do what it calls vectorizing, you know, changing a raster image into a vector. And I actually like Vector Magic's algorithms and user interface a little bit better than the image trace options in Illustrator. The problem is this license, when I bought it, was $200 for a lifetime license. Now it's $295 for a lifetime license, or you can get like a $10 a month subscription to it. But all it does is change raster images into vectors. And it doesn't really allow you to alter those vectors. So you'd still need a program like, like Vector.com or Illustrator to change those vectors after the fact. And Illustrator has all of those features in it. So competing with things like Vector Magic, I brought my raster file in. So you see all those pixels, all that, that weirdness. Remember, it's good to scan it at a high resolution or to digitally ink it in Photoshop at a high resolution so this is smoother and I click on it, that's going to open up in my properties the image trace options. If you don't see it there, you can also find it under Window Image Trace. And that's a good place to get to the advanced options too, which here, if you click it, it will give you the defaults. You want black and white logo. In 2023's version of Illustrator, this is 2022, they have logo as an option. They no longer have black and white logo. So you have to choose logo and then you have to choose two color, which is annoying to get to black and white logo. So it's more steps. And then you need to go to advanced because we don't want it to actually show white shapes, right? We want it to ignore the white and only show us the black shapes. So once you've done that, this is previewing it and you play with these settings and notice already how much smoother it is on some edges. But to get it to be smoother on all edges, I'm going to lower the number of paths it allows. And there we go. And I can soften the corners. And I can allow for less noise. And I can make the threshold a little bit more picky. And that's basically going to smooth it out as well as possible. But it's always going to have little problems when you image trace such as this is a really common one, which I don't quite understand, which Vector Magic does not have as much. You're right, my illustrator is working that way. <laughs> Maybe it's a trackpad versus a mouse, I don't know. But, but this little you know, prong that happens was definitely not in my original sketch, right? But it's because it's just closing that loop. So how do we fix that? Well. Right now, it's showing us what the vector will look like, but it's not a vector yet. We don't see anchor points. It's not a vector until we hit expand. So just remember to hit expand, and then, lo and behold, I can see the anchor points. 
And if I can see the anchor points, especially by using the small selection tool here, I can use my favorite tool, which is the pencil tool, which is like a free form pen tool, but it has this advantage of being able to alter existing paths as well. And as long as I start on the path and end on the path, I can redraw it. I can also double click on the pencil tool, set it to be more smooth, but I still have to start and end on the path. And then what was shown to us in our digital honors mentorship presentation, which is linked in the course under assignments now, is that you can also use the smooth tool, which for some reason in the new versions of Illustrator is not automatically in your toolbar. So you have to go to the three dots, find it. It looks like a little blending stump from painting the smooth tool. And I add it in with my pencil and my brush tools. But if you use the smooth tool, you don't need to start and stop on the path. You just need to click around it and it will average out that path as long as the anchors are showing. So these are all ways to kind of clean it up before you finalize your line art as a vector. Now you can take any image into Illustrator like that, but you want a higher quality image because otherwise you're going to spend a lot of time cleaning it up. Now let's see how Vector Magic did it. Pretty good job. That's what it, the pixels were. It downsampled it. This is the preview of what the vector would be if I bought the program. It does a nice job. And that's just a medium level of detail. If I wanted it even smoother, I could do a low level of detail, which would be for like stencil graphics. And I can download it if I pay for the program. So I need to, I haven't used this in a while. I have to find my old license and see if I can transfer it to this new computer because it's, it's helpful. And what I love about this is you can sa save it as an SVG and as an EPS. EPS is the one I would always recommend. And PDF is just to show it to, to clients. All right. So Illustrator, that's a, a handy thing. But if we go back to Photoshop, what are some other ways? that you can get to clean line art, just to remind you. So one way is to bring your sketch into Photoshop and then on a new layer. So this is your refined sketch. As Mason pointed out, it's a good idea to make your refined sketch less dark <laughs> before you start inking on top of it. So what I do is I just put a blank layer of white on the top. This is onion skinning. And then I set that opacity down to about 60% so that it, it's like putting tracing paper over my sketch. And then you start inking with your black line art. And depending on the brush, you use the brush tool. You can use smoothing at different levels. This is smoothing at 45%. And you want your brush to be 100% sharp under hardness. And if you're using a tablet, you want it to be pressure sensitive if you want that variation. But if you want it to be technical, you can use a mouse or a trackpad or you use your tablet, but you don't use the pressure sensitivity brushes. You use the ones at the very top. And then they'll, no matter how hard you press, it will always be the exact same line width. You have the problems with kind of following curves through. So if I do this eye here, for instance, it's smoothing it out for me as I go, but then you have to start and stop it. And that can be pretty difficult, especially when you get to corners. So often little things like this happen. little bleeds and that happens all the time. So what I recommend if you're inking in Photoshop is just switch the foreground and background color and then paint with the same settings with white and clean up your, your edges. But if you're going for a perfectly technical line, it's better to fix that in Illustrator. Now we do this at a high resolution, just like we would scan inks at a high resolution. 
So at least 10 by 10 inches by 350. And then to bring it to Illustrator, I did a few different line weights here, you know, showing you different things. What I would do, and I, I think my favorite was this setting, is I would turn everything off, save it as a JPEG to the desktop. These are, these are what I call test files because they're just intermediaries between programs. Save it as a copy to the JPEG. Doesn't really matter the quality because I'm only saving it the once. So there's that JPEG. I open that JPEG up with Illustrator. Baboom. Click on it with the large selection tool that opens the properties. Image trace, black and white logo, or in 2023, logo. Switch the colors of the logo under these settings to two. If you don't see these settings, click right here. That will open up your image trace options. And you can also go to window image trace to get to this. I have to remember to click on the advanced options and say ignore the white. That way you'll see these white shapes disappear. So it's just clean line art. And they actually have a line art setting under the presets. But you don't want to use that, and this is why. <laughs> because when you do the line art setting, it maps it as strokes instead of as fill paths. So that can work for technical drawings, like architectural plans, but does not work for, for graphics. So that's why I always use black and white logo or logo to color. They're just the default settings for this and then you modify it and then they're custom settings anyway. So again, you always want to ignore the white and then you can play with the threshold, you can play with the number of paths, you can play with the number of corners, you can play with the amount of noise. This is to clean up like artifacts that might be on the scanning bed. And then you hit expand. And then if I use the small selection tool, I'll see the anchor points and it does a great job a lot like Vector Magic, except Illustrator still has these little saw teeth every once in a while. And there's lots of ways to fix that. As long as I can see the anchor point, I can use the direct selection tool to actually move the anchor point on top of that other one. That's one way. But my favorite way to fix it so you're not creating tons of anchor points is to use the pencil tool and just start on the path and end on the path. And it will smooth it out for you. All right. So what were the three methods we went over last class? One, drawing it on top of your sketch with a brush in a raster program like Photoshop. So I did this. Two, opening it Close this one. Um, cleaning it up, your refined sketch, then printing out your refined sketch, inking it by hand. I'll turn on my camera and show you that like I did last class. You know, printing it out after I already kind of cleaned up my pencil sketch. So this is exactly what I wanted. Putting tracing vellum over it and then inking it by hand with a permanent pen. You can use a Sharpie, you can use a Uniball. Depends on the line weight you want. Then putting this on a scanner, we went over how to scan last class, putting white behind it, scanning it in at high resolution. And that is how I got <laughs> this file. my test file, because I'm, again, moving it in and out. Then I moved that into Illustrator, did the whole live trace thing to get this. I saved it as an EPS. And this is pretty good. There's little things I need to fix. But I could fix that in Illustrator. And then here is the third way. Take your refined image, open it directly with Illustrator. So this is your pencil sketch. And I want to show you.